Hello, I'm Matthew Malcolm with California Ag Network reporting to you here today with Emily Rooney, the president of the Ag Council of California. Obviously, it was a big lead up to the elections, a lot of activity, and then it's kind of been silent a little bit. Like, we won some and we lost some, but if, arguably it could be said we lost a lot more than we came. Yeah. Uh, but we want to be positive, um, yeah. obviously, and move forward because we've got to live with what we've got. And Emily, I was hoping you could kind of give us the synopsis of that and what to what what farmers in California can expect moving forward. Sure, thanks, Malcolm. Um, yeah, it was a tough election cycle for us, for sure. But um, I think we still continue with our steady drumbeat of continuing to work with moderate Democrats, some of the more business-friendly types, on some of the issues that impact agriculture. Um, on the regulatory side, we it can expect a decision on the unimpaired flow situation in December. That's obviously a big concern for us, and we've been engaged in that effort to the extent we can. Um, so we're expecting some outcomes on there. And then um, on the sort of legislative side, uh, we, you know, the bill introduction situation is just now happening, so we'll know a lot more in a couple more weeks. But we're expecting some more, you know, challenges on the labor front. But kind of a unique situation that we're looking at right now is the situation with Prop 13. Um, what we saw, which was a surprise to me, was that the gas tax was not repealed on the ballot. Um, that was a surprise to me. So we're starting to um, hear or get the sense that folks believe that Californians support tax increases and so we're a little concerned about Prop 13 and what this concept called split roll where um, they would keep the benefits of Prop 13 for residential properties but potentially increase them for commercial and industrial properties and that's a big concern of ours obviously. Folks are anticipating an initiative on the 2020 ballot and so we're trying to figure out ways we can uh, mitigate that if it's if it comes to fruition. Yeah. Interesting. You know, we had some things that we hoped for and expected and didn't come to yeah. pass, so we mm -hmm. really got to kind of reorganize ourselves right, and right, right. keep plugging away moving forward. We, we really appreciate organizations and groups like the Ag Council of California yeah. continue working to lobby on behalf of California farmers. Yeah. And although we had some losses, it's still it's critical more than ever that we get involved. Yeah. Uh, so don't lose hope, yeah. right? I know, and I think, you know, one of our big success stories right now is the um, climate change program as an example. So how do we take these regulatory issues, and a lot of my members participate in a cap and trade program from an emission standpoint, and we've been able to turn that around and turn it into $600 million worth of funding for tractor turnover, dairy digesters, alternative manure management program, and a brand new uh, grant program for food processors to uh, mitigate emissions. And so how do we take these tough regulatory challenges and turn them into opportunities for our industry? And so that's the sort of lens I look at these issues with is, you know, how do we turn it into a positive for us? And that's the importance of working with moderate Democrats. Great, well thank you, yeah. Emily. Stay, stay current on what's going on. Uh, by being involved in these organizations, yeah. also reading our publications, American Vineyard, Pacific Nut Producer, Vegetables West, California Fresh Fruit, and California Dairy Magazines. I'm Matthew Malcolm, CaliforniaAgNet.com.